I'm Jay-Z. I'm Daniel. This is Just My DIY. And Jay-Z said we needed some chargers for the wedding. I said, hey, everybody's phone is their own problem. <laughs> and I told him, first of all, we really need to be nice to our guests. And second of all, I meant charger plates, which make your tables look extra pretty, not electronics chargers. So I said, fine. <laughs> We'll go on a search on the internet and see if we can find anything in a color we liked. See if anybody had a return policy we liked. And now we're here. That's right. We couldn't find the exact color we were looking for, so we decided we're going to figure out if we can make it. So we went to the Dollar Tree and got the chargers that we liked, which they actually have quite a few different charger plates. Yeah. And through a lot of trials and a few errors. We discovered how to paint them to the absolute color we want and make them last until the wedding and beyond. That's right. It is more than just slapping a coat of spray paint on these, and we're going to walk you through all of those steps right now. So let's charge on. So first things first, you need beautiful spring weather or something close to it. You need something in the middle temperature is easy on the humidity because that's exactly what your can of paint will tell you. Ignore these temperature ranges and humidity suggestion at your own peril. If you're not working within these, your paint may crack or may not cure and adhere properly. Next, you need to prep your chargers. So we take them outside because they need to be sanded. We're going to use a moderately fine grit sandpaper. You don't want scarring, but you, you're gouging. You don't want gouging, but you do want a little bit of scarring for your primer to adhere to. We're just trying to rough them up a little bit, right? And so we're using around 180 or 220 grit for the sandpaper, but that does create a little bit of dust. So we're going to use a little bit of alcohol to on a microfiber cloth to remove that dust, but we're using the alcohol because it evaporates quickly and also removes human oils. It's definitely a good cleaner for these and so Daniel is going to get to work sanding and cleaning all of the chargers. I'm off in the background now getting set up for our next step. You can see we're working with two colors of chargers. Even if you're not working with two colors, you're still going to want to prime them. So here we have the Color Shot Primer. It is available at either Michael's or Amazon. It is, of course, matte and white, and we're going to use this according to the instructions, which first means shake, 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 and then paint in thin layers. This is where everyone, including us before, messes up with spray paint. It has to be super thin. This is our first layer. It's barely a dusting. And so we're gonna wait around 10 minutes and come in for our second light layer. So we are creating white layers no matter what the color of our charger because in the end you want your true color that you're going to use to really pop and white is the best way to do that. That's right. Even if you're not using two different color chargers, that white base is going to give you the truest representation of your color. Now in total we did four coats of these. It was a little bit of a windy day, um, but four coats is what we needed to get a nice white base and then we put them in the garage to cure overnight because curing and drying are two different things. Now we're gonna pull out the same branding, Color Shot Mermaid Satin Paint and Primer. This does have primer in itself, but we really didn't you really did need that white primer base because the the dedicated primer just makes things stick better so we don't trust the paint plus primer we always do a dedicated primer layer so you can see that we're going to be doing this in about three layers uh, still staying with that same dusting effect and in the case of the second and third layers we're using longer sweeping motions so coming at it at various angles to make sure that the color is getting in all the crevices, all the dips in these chargers, 10 minutes between layers because we had a really good temperature. Yours may be a little more, a little less depending on your temperature. Um, but we gave this really nice coatings in only three coats and this is how it looked after the paint layer. Of course, you can paint these in bulk. We are just showing you the one up close because we felt it was better representation for that particular step. Um, but with the larger set of these, came at them from all angles, let them cure overnight. So we had a seal coat. And this isn't a coat for seals. 
but more of like a way to protect your paint from chipping when during storage use and other things like this. So we're going to use a gloss sealer. Just in the world of paints, gloss tends to be a little more durable uh, than other like you know, a matte or a satin. So we're going in with the gloss again with the color shot, again with the shaking for a full minute beforehand, and again with the thin layers. Now you did see us wipe these off beforehand. That's because it's incredibly important that you not seal anything in. This is a clear top layer, so if you sealed any dirt or pollen or anything in it, you would definitely be able to see it. We're gonna have about four coats of this in total as well with 10 minutes between drying times. And we did let that cure overnight before it was time to clean the overspray. This is Daniel's job. I remove the sticker on the bottom, <laughs> I pull out the kitchen sponge. Although you see a bottle of alcohol, we're actually only using water to do this. And we're just using elbow grease, not power, not pressure, just speed and gentle abrasion. And we're on a very soft surface because we don't want to mar the painted side. This step could have been avoided if we had taped off the plates, but we didn't. I don't think we expected this much overspray. So if you want to avoid this part, you can, of course, tape off the bottom. That's just going to add some time and expense to the process. And now once they're clean, it was time to put them on the table and we are just so happy with how these turned out. They are just beautiful. They add just the right pop and they look great like this, how you can style your table. Or of course you can put plates on them. Now it's important in between uses that you do store them properly. And since we're having a destination wedding, we're gonna pack them up tight, but we will say that you have to make sure they're fully cured before you do this. Otherwise they'll take on the texture, whatever you're putting in between them. So you can see we're pulling out the miscellaneous sink. Sometimes it's what the plates were, were protected with originally. Sometimes it's spare bubble wrap that we have laying around. <laughs> Sometimes it's 12 layers. It's, uh, you know, it's just all up to the will of Jay-Z. These get really heavy when you stack them on top of each other. So I went thicker between the bottom layers that were gonna carry all the weight and thinner on top because they weren't gonna have as much weight on top of them. And of course, labeled to know how many were in each box. Now I actually know what a charger is and how to do a great and fabulous paint job. And we hope after watching this video that you do too. So if you like the video, you should give it that thumbs up, subscribe, ring the bell, leave us a nice comment in the comment line, and of course know everything that we use to do that it is listed down in the description. Also in the description are links to all of our social handles. Please connect with us across platforms. We love hearing from you. And don't forget to check out our blog at JustMyDIY.com. Thanks for watching. <laughs>